hello, and welcome back to another video. So I was recently scrolling through some of my older YouTube videos, and I recently found the Smart Tunnel Wars one, and I realized that there's more uses than just for instant wires, although instant wires are probably what you're going to be using a tunnel board for, you might also want to use them for a piston bolt. So I thought I would just go over a couple ways that you can modify some of the versions to work for uh, piston bolts instead. And n not even just piston bolts, you can actually modify this for pretty much anything. So. Uh, let's go ahead and start this. I guess I have a giant wall that's just pure stone, so there's no, like, ores or anything or gravity blocks. It can work with them, obviously, but, uh, you might want to use instant fall for gravity blocks and stuff like that. Then you can see the TNT going off. Let's turn down our music, because it's going to be really loud. And here you can see they're already starting. I don't know why there's a glitch here. Lighting glitch, whatever. Oh. No camera, that's why. Okay, sorry. So, now we uh, are waiting for these parts here to go in. So these are the wall pushers and the floor pushers. And then after we cur or we pull up blocks for our piston bolt, and then we also have the roof uh, smoothener. Uh, I'm, I would probably say don't actually run the wall smoothener, or sorry, the uh, ceiling smoothener with the tunnel bore. It's just always a bad thing to run them with it because it constantly breaks because of gravel and stuff. It's just going to get detached most likely basically. But yeah, so you, if it's just pure stone, which you're probably never going to have, you can uh, run this with the, the ceiling smoothener. But yeah, here you can see pretty much everything running. You have a very narrow walkway to get through this area by the way. So very narrow window. but. Yeah, you could still technically get through. I guess it's good enough for if you're trying to get to the front of the machine. Kind of struggling here, but whatever. So, uh, at the front of the machine, this is the same tunnel bore by Paul and Breath as we used before. Uh, I slightly modified it to be a little bit uh, less cost efficient on the slime blocks. So I just modified some stuff here to do for some uh, basic slime stuff. So like these glass blocks here were slime, stuff like that which just takes away a couple of slime blocks, which can still be really helpful if you're trying to do this early game or something. You need a tunnel. And yeah, here you can see pretty much the end result of all the smooth tunnels, plus these blocks being pulled out for the piston bolt. And we're just about to break through here as well. So yeah, this tunnel bore is actually uh, pretty fast, so you're gonna need to use a alt account, as I said in the previous video regarding smart tunnel bores. Uh, but yeah, so you're either going to need a alternative account that isn't uh, hosted on your computer or your internet or whatever you're using basically, because if your internet goes out, then both accounts will get knocked off, which basically just means that you might as well just have one account at that point. So yeah, also I added an extra minecart back here for the player to sit in which is just kind of nice, uh, but yeah, so you can have a spare player just sitting in there, all the slimes are bouncing me around, because this is an older version, <laughs> but yeah, so you can just have your alternative account, or a bot, uh, I would honestly recommend a bot if you can, but if you're not playing on carpet, then you don't have bots, so yeah, that's not exactly ideal, but yeah, so there's uh, just the spot for the bots, you gotta, you, I, I would recommend you have one, technically it's not mandatory, but it'd also be nice if you just have it, had a second player, plus they can watch the ceiling flattener. Okay, let's stop this now because it's out of the tunnel. Then I can go into a little bit more depth about these parts of the machine with them. Okay. So, now to kind of go over everything, the first thing that we do is we flatten this, or sorry, the first thing we do is make the tunnel, obviously, but after the tunnel, we uh, push down on the floor, which is going to be like this. I guess I can show this. So right here, because if there were a situation like this where there wasn't a block underneath, but there was already a block here, and we just had the sticky piston, it would push that block down, which is not as efficient as first pushing everything down, which means that even if there already were blocks down here, they're just going to get 
Uh, like no, nothing's gonna happen to them. They're just gonna stay there. And then we can have the, the piston go over. Let's take a piston, sorry. And grab up those blocks. So this was actually shown to me by Penta. This was the second improvement that we made to the first My Total War. That was actually the part that he designed. So I kind of remodeled it, made it a little bit more, more compact, uh, observer and piston efficient, and yeah. Another thing is the corner blocks. So these corner blocks will almost always be there. Not guaranteed, obviously, but they will almost always be there because we're actually doing it twice for each corner. So as you can see here, here we're pushing it out and then pulling it back in. And then we're also doing it here. So here we're pushing it and then pulling it back in, which means that there's two blocks to try and fill one gap. So this is extremely efficient. Uh, and yeah, so the corners are for whenever there's one of the blocks either here or here, there's going to be the corner getting filled. And that's basically how we do the corners. It applies to every single corner here, you can see. So here we have the side ones, here we have the bottom ones, here we have the side ones, bottom ones, and then top ones and uh, ceiling ones. So that's how that part works. Uh, as I said, you might want to run the ceiling uh, mover separately. So to do that, what you're going to do is you're just going to come to the back here. I don't know if you can see roughly where I am, but you want to remove these two pistons here. Not the one underneath. The one underneath is responsible for making the piston bolt uh, layout. But these two here, because those are pulling directly these pistons, and also this extension, which is going to be the, the ceiling mover. Then once you're done, you can just uh, attach these pistons to a flying machine and then fly them across. And I would honestly recommend doing that instead. It's just more efficient and it's nicer. So. Uh, the next thing that we can actually kind of go over is two different types of piston bolts. So, in older, or sorry, not in older versions, in newer versions, there's a different kind of piston bolt that you can use, which is one that looks something like this, where basically the stone needs to be on both sides. It's basically a more efficient piston bolt, where you have, like, one is a curved rail, and one's a rotated powered rail. It's something like this, I don't know. I think, yeah, like that. Oh, I am not good at this. Okay, here, then, ah. <laughs> yeah, these piston bolts, as you can see, this is why it's not in 1.12, because this is, yeah, crazy. But basically, it uses half the pistons. So, mo modules like this. I know that this isn't the only one that you can use, but it's uh, basically a better one than the standard piston bolts. So, uh, actually I think we can show this really quick, because I think it, it works in older versions, it just doesn't, like, if you can't curve the rails this way in these versions, which is the only issue. So let's grab a button, let's see if this actually works. See a block there. And yeah, so you can see it it's already starting to get pushed. So this is basically the formation of the newer version piston bolts, where you can use powered rails as well. Uh, and basically have one piston push in Minecraft two blocks, and it'd still be 20 meters a second, which is really nice. So, now that uh, we kind of know that this shape needs to be altered for newer versions, what we can actually do is just come to the back system here. So this is really basic actually. All that you need to do is just remove this sticky piston, so coming onto the left side of the machine, uh, assuming you're aiming from the back, you're going to come up to this piston here, the one that's facing down, you're going to remove it and its observer. Then you're going to extend the slime here by one more block, add a observer up here. Uh, technically it can also be down here, but, or actually can it? No, it cannot, because then uh, whenever this is pushed forward it can also stick there. So no, it cannot be uh, in front like this. Uh, and then just add the piston back. So now you have basically this whole slime bar, two redstone blocks, and then just the pistons on the side. This still is within push limit, by the way, so you have 5, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, which is just under push limit, so it's good. And then also the 12th being the, the second piston, which will also work. So yeah, I guess we can actually try and run this version here. Let's see it. It'll take a little while for it to get to the back, but that's fine. 
Yep, and there you can see it's already getting pushed every second one. And then it pulls up the block. Right, nice. So that's how that works. How you can modify it. So now, what if you don't want a piston bolt? Well, you can pretty much configure this kind of a system for anything that's a like what you want every second block. So you might not want a piston bolt, but you might want a different kind of formation. For instance, the old uh, smart tunnel boards, they did a formation, I believe, like this. Let's show this real quick. So yeah, they did a formation that looked like this, which is basically a improved version uh, of an instant wire. So what you could do here, was you grab a slab, and I also need a lever and dust, of course I do. Okay, so, now what you want to do is have, oh sorry, no, you want your piston up here and over here, Need rails, <laughs> and yeah, so you have your rest of block there, two rails, a slab, a lever on the side, and then dust curving all the way around. So this would basically be, uh, whenever this here got a power, this output would change to 15, and then it could power a couple blocks down the line. So just to show this, basically right here. So this is what it would do. You can see that that piston over there is being instantly powered whenever I flip the lever. And that's how that instant wire basically works. There was also the redstone block version where you could just place a redstone block instead of having that third block. Which requires one less click because you technically need to activate the lever. But yeah. So, pretty basic systems that you might want within your tunnel. And you can pretty much modify this as much as you want. Uh, so for something like that, that instant wire, which was 17 uh, long tileable, you are going to need a flying machine system instead of this because you're not going to be able to have 17 pistons in a row without going over push limit. The pistons into themselves is more, never mind the slime blocks and the redstone blocks that you would need. So, it's it's a lot to do it like that. You might be able to honestly squeeze a third thing out of here. Let's see. So, here we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, then we can have 9, 10, 11. So you can pretty much have a sticky piss and double holes. <laughs> That's about it. But yeah, so it, it, it's a lot. But you only are ever going to really need something that's either too wide tileable or something like 17 wide tileable for an instant wire. So the old version still works, to clarify. You don't need to use a newer version. <laughs> but it's just uh, kind of a nicer system here. You have better wall smootheners, you have a nice ceiling smoothener. Uh, the corners are obviously doubled as I said, the chances of getting a block in the corner, and all those sorts of things. And it's also just a lot more simplistic, it's slime efficient, and just, yeah, a bunch of other things. But yeah, that's pretty much it about this tunnel board. It's pretty basic. Uh, actually, one more thing I want to mention real quick is about this minecart. Don't put the, the minecart on here. Because if you accidentally trigger this piston while you're building this, say that, like you're just building up the tunnel board first, now you're going to put on the minecarts, and then you're going to go to do the extensions after, this could just clock and it's just going to be annoying. So just make sure that you put it another block higher so that it doesn't QC that piston. But yeah, also one more thing, you can add one fence to either side of this. So. You uh, I know that sometimes it's annoying when this is rotated in this direction, no, not like that, in this direction. So it's really annoying because it can like slide off the, the, the rails and sort of, sort of stuff like that. You can add one ra or one fence to this. So what I would actually recommend you do is if you need to, you can add like, uh, I don't know, some sort of fence like this or glass block would probably be better. And then up here you can add a glass block or something. That would basically mean that your whole minecart system is, isn't closed. I'm just going to leave it open because in this version it's perfectly fine. But yeah, that's pretty much how this works. 
So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like my answer obviously in the description. And that's it. Yeah. Bye.